enough morning work. Now I have to get ready. After I'll go out with Ray, I'll show you that. And after I'm heading to the office. <laughs> to go for a walk it's down here all right all right little walk and then up to the office <laughs> What I'd like to do is to give you some background information about what we're doing, what I'm doing with my The Pen Game Changer project and also on my entrepreneurial journey. Uh, it's going to be a few minutes of talking, so if you're not interested, you can go, uh, you can pass forward. Now, The Pen Game Changer has started as a, as, with this idea around one year ago. Okay, but already two years ago, I saw that was that there was an opportunity about growing the industry of fine writing instruments, uh, because there is a beauty behind it. A lot of people actually feel it, and I also recognize that when you explain that product in a specific way, then you also get a specific feedback from the people and also uh, you get real aficionados who actually care about products and beauty and about service and experience more than they care about prices and the overall idea was when we started was not just you know to do stuff and information and content so that we can could sell more at style of Zug, even if style of Zug is my main occupation but it was to help the whole industry to grow. Now, this was a vision. This is a vision. This is an idea with ideals and it is a big picture because if I wanted to generate money as a first thing, I would have done everything that I have done to sell products through our channels. But that wasn't the main idea at the beginning. The main idea, again, was to help the collectivity to grow the whole thing so that we would have all more from this industry. Uh, which also means for a final customer that its experience would actually improve and become better and better and the products that would be released on the market would, be would become better and better. And we have seen some major beautiful releases um, in this industry in the last month. Now, um, on this journey, you know, when you have a big vision, when you're trying to do something that goes beyond making money, that goes beyond simply, you know, looking at the numbers, how much are we spending, how much are we making, the journey is complicated. Also, you should know that you will not find people or you will not only find people who will tell you, yeah, it's amazing, let's do it, it's fantastic, but you would also find also uh, people that just tell you, mm, I don't believe in it, you're not the right person to do it, um, that's not the right direction, you're arrogant, and stuff like this. All stuff that I had um, to, to hear about myself and about what we're doing. Actually, we're trying to be as humble as possible while we're doing it, because if we wouldn't be humble, it, we would not even be able to start. Now, you should know that as an entrepreneur, when you're going that way, that path, it is a roller coaster. It is a huge roller coaster. There are days where you feel like it's happening. Everything is moving, everything is happening. And the day after, you can be in the deepest, black hole you've ever been in your life and it's emotions it's because what drives you is passion and this passion 
that you're putting into the project, you know, cannot always be explained and you cannot always explain what you're doing and where you are going. You should try your best to explain it and to be a good communicator when it comes to your project and ideas and uh, developments of, of your business. But it's not always possible because sometimes it's just the picture is too big and some things, even yourself as an entrepreneur, you can only recognize and realize them after a few months. Oh, that was the big picture. That's how it evolved. The only thing that you should do and you can do is to persist, to be cons consistent and just keep on doing what you believe is right. And to keep on doing what you believe is right, it requires a, a huge amount of uh, humility in order to recognize when you're going the wrong direction, in order to recognize if you're doing the right thing for the collectivity and if you're not uh, you know, starting to go on the wrong uh, path. And we should just be aware that in this journey, this is part of it, but it's probably also the most exciting moment of the journey because we should really enjoy these moments, the building moments, because this is a moment that is never going to come back. When you're building from scratch with zero, something that could become extraordinary, that's the moment where you should feel proud about it. And, you know, I feel proud and I feel grateful for all the support I have received from brands, from, from uh, retailers around the world, uh, from, from customers more than anyone else, because that's the thing that matters the most is what do the final customer think about what we're doing with Inkstable, with Pen Statement, with Describe, with my channels and so on. Do they like it? Do they like um, the, the, the brands that are working with us and so on? Do they, do they like what's, what's happening? And when a final customer recognizes and gives harsh criticism, but is also able to recognize that it's going and moving somewhere, that's where I feel very, very proud. And that obviously uh, reflects, reflects into the industry and reflects for distributors, for retailers and so on. But what I want to tell you at last is on this journey, you're you know, on a journey, on an entrepreneurial journey where you're building something big that is bigger than yourself, you're going to get out of the comfort zone. And getting out of the comfort zone means to not sleep at night sometimes. It means that you can't sleep. It means that you have the fire, the burning desire to do something in order to bring it further and further. And that is just okay. That is, that is exactly how it should be. Because getting out of the comfort zone and feeling not comfortable in your position means that you are assimilating and you are actually understanding and learning new things every day with discussions, with conversations, with challenges, with successes, and so on. All of these things put together help us to go where we need to go. And I told myself I need to actually take some more time to understand and reflect towards the successes we've already had towards the losses we've already had and to be grateful for the path we're going because you know it is quite a satisfying one and as a last thing don't forget a war always has losses but it also has gains and at the end of the war you can win the war or you can lose the war but at least you've been there but you should know even if you win the war there are gonna be losses on the way and it's just part of the game obviously i'm not pro war at all uh, but it's just to give you an idea of you know how it's gonna feel like So now you're here again, knocking at my door A little too late for, I'm sorry for The lights went out cause you kept cutting the cord And I started to fade into your grave See I finally opened up my eyes And I saw me coming back to life 
Okay, guys, so before we finish this vlog, I hope you liked it. I mean, I'm gonna try to improve and do it even cooler. Unfortunately, we're not in Manhattan here, but still, Tsugi is quite a place to be. Anyway, uh, it's been a crazy day. Uh, I mean, I couldn't show everything because of uh, because I just cannot film everyone I'm having a meeting with. Uh, but now before we finish we do the q a and then we finish cutting everything we'll schedule post it today you're gonna see it and i can't wait to hear all your impressions about it make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet guys subscribe to the channel and leave a like comment share do whatever you have to do so that this content gets out there q a now i would like to show you that victor thinks he's a lamborghini Yep. Okay, good fellas, I decided I'm gonna do this Q&A out here. I know everybody's gonna look at me while I do this, but that's totally fine. So let's start with the first question you guys asked me. There's a lot of people watching. Anyway, do you carry a briefcase or satchel in your store with you? Uh, I do not carry a briefcase at the moment. I always used to carry a briefcase, but right now what I'm doing is I'm using a uh, backpack. I really like backpacks. I'm still looking for the perfect backpack. Probably gonna go for something of, uh, for, from one of Mont Blanc very, very soon. But yeah, backpack is the answer. How do you convince customer to come to Style of Two? I don't convince them. They get convinced by themselves. You know, since we started our businesses and everything, the idea was always to create a certain dynamism around the company that would attract customers automatically into the store. So basically, you know, I'm not a fan at all of, uh, you know, closing down the sale and stuff like this, aggressive sales, even if I respect aggressive salesperson who know how to start and finish uh, a sales pitch and actually do the sale but for me it's always been about you know creating a whole thing around the brand or around the company that then leads customer automatically into the store I think one of the secret is you know uh, the fact that people when they're at home when they're at work they open up Instagram they open up YouTube they go on the website and they have everything that is part of our world uh, everything that is part of the pen game changer or part of style of two in case of style of two they then get the chance to actually you know come to the store enjoy a nice espresso also touch the pens uh, get get to know each other you know and I think this 360 degree experience is what makes the difference and then drives customers uh, to the store or to any business at the end of the day then another question we had on Instagram is why should someone use a fountain pen my question is why should someone not use a fountain pen I mean look it's like with cars I mean you can drive from A to B with any with a smart and it's cool and it's good and it has its peculiarities, but I mean, you want to compare going with an Audi A8, with a Bentley, with a Rolls Royce, I mean, Rolls Royce is over the top, but okay, a Ferrari or a Porsche, whatever. It's just a different feeling. And we as human beings, we live from emotions and feelings we get um, with products, with moments, with, you know, everything that surrounds us. And I often say we don't ride that much anymore. So at least those times that we take a pen in hand, it should be something nice, something valuable, something that feels like something you want to use. And that's what it is with fountain pens. Putting that name on paper is absolutely a feeling of its own. And you, if you haven't yet, you should really try it. Try it with a non-expensive one and start listening to the sound.
bricks, you can do it. If it's all filled up, you, you won't have any problems. I actually only had once a fontapel leaking, even if I take a fontapel every time on, a, on an airplane. But for an airplane, I would today probably rather go with a roller ball. Or if I have to sign something which is not that important, but I want to make sure that it, you know that it's gonna it's gonna work right away, then I go with a roller ball. Or maybe my best fontapel just dried out because I didn't use it for a few days which doesn't happen with almost none of my pens but still those are situations when I take uh, a roller ball it's totally legit, feels good and you're absolutely okay with doing the, uh, this even you know a nice limited edition as a roller ball where you get the most of the writing and user experience uh, even if it's not a, a fountain pen totally totally fine then what is a good pen? that's another question I got on Instagram what's a good pen? I think a good pen has, you know, like the perfect pen has several factors that make a difference. It flows well, it doesn't dry out, um, the nib gives you a certain feeling when writing with it, the balance of the, the pen while you're holding it in your hand, uh, the little mechanic, mechanical feelings, you know, like capping on capping, unscrewing the piston filling mechanism, uh, the touch of the materials, those are all, all features that actually make a difference when it comes to a good or to, or to a pen that is good or a pen that is not so good. But I think this is also a matter of perception. Everyone will feel um, something else as a good pen, you know? So I think there are multiple answers here. Which will be your next pen? I don't know. I'm actually very, very happy with the design zero. Very, very happy, extremely happy. I'm also very happy with my Montegrappa Zero that I did on the configurator. Probably Japanese. Namiki Yukari Royale or the Black Urushi or the um, Sailor King of Pen. But you know what? Maybe we're gonna do like a video together where we're gonna decide together, you know? Like we're gonna start the video, then we're gonna do a poll. You're gonna decide for me which one I should buy. Not the most expensive one. Eh? Don't let me buy the most expensive one. Let the customer buy the most expensive one. But maybe that's something we should do. Those are some of the questions that I have um, that I have uh, had. Sorry, I just got messages that I had received on um, Instagram. Thank you very much for asking, and let's go back.